Welcome, uh, everyone, uh, to this kind of one-day workshop, but spread over two days. The reason it's spread over two days is because we've got presenters beaming in from different parts of the world, and we've got to accommodate uh, the, the various timescales. So we have a, a one-day workshop spread over this afternoon and tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Um, there's a lot of talk about scaling uh, in the CGIR, in agricultural research and development more generally. You know, gone are the days, all that long ago, when as a CG centre we got core funding, we were asked to do good things with the money, it reduced international public goods, hang them out there and hope that someone passing would, <laughs> would, would pick them up. Usually national programmes, national systems were expected to pick up and then adapt and, and, and scale. Um, as, a, as, a, as an organisation, as a CGR, we're now being held accountable for ensuring that our research ultimately achieves outcomes and has impact. And the CGR strategy and results framework has some very ambitious targets in terms of you know, millions of hectares to be reached and millions of people to be pulled out of, of, of poverty. There's no way we'll ever be able to demonstrate whether we do that, do that. But our investors, you know, not only want us to develop new technologies, new interventions, new processes, business models, and so on. Uh, they do want to invest in, uh, get a return on their in investment. And what they're looking for is our research to have, ultimately, to have impact. Of course, we're not a development organization. We're a research organization. We have to work with development partners to achieve that, that impact. Um, so we generate new ideas, technologies, processes. We take them into the field. We pilot them in a few villages with, you know, maybe a few hundred or a few thousand farmers or households. And it always works because we make sure it, we make sure it works. There's very strong incentives built into the system that pilot studies will, will succeed. Uh, because we can always tweak things as we go along. We can support different parts of the process and so on. But that's very different from, you know, reaching millions, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of, of households and farmers. So the question is, how can we maximize the probability that our research will have impact and reach large numbers of people at scale? Um, can we be more systematic and strategic in identifying what is likely to work, and how it will work, and why, and, and, and where? Uh, and what tools might be available to help us in that, in that process? In the last few years, there's been quite a lot of work and research done on the science of scaling, if you, if you like. Um, and we as ILRI need to make sure that we are up to speed and aware of the kind of current thinking and, and, and so on. Now, while Ido and I have been talking about having a workshop like this for some time, we decided it would be timely to have it this month, particularly as by the end of this month, we have to submit the first draft of what we are now call investing in livestock early to 2025 to the Gates Foundation and other. So, thinking about scaling is part of that. A part of that process, we have to convincing to our donors that we will be able to achieve the impact that we we say we will. Uh, so we've we've set up this workshop with uh, three three speakers. Uh, first of whom is Larry Cooley, who I'll introduce to you in a moment. Uh, and then we, uh, later in today, we have Leonard Waltering, who's with CIMIT and, and, and GIZ, uh, to learn a bit more from other CG centres, what CIMIT are, are doing. And then tomorrow morning, we'll have Mark Schutz from IITA, who's been leading a lot of the thinking in terms of uh, scaling in the roots, tubers and bananas, uh, CRP. Um, so, we're going to begin with a presentation from Larry. I first met Larry almost a year ago now in South Sudan, and we were together in Accra last week. And Larry has really been at the forefront of the thinking on scaling, not just in agriculture. He was telling me some interesting stories about case studies in the, in the health sector in India uh, last week. And Larry uh, convenes a community of practice, or maybe you co-convene it, Larry, I'm not sure, for the World Bank. And there are various sub communities of practice in, in, in that, including one on, on agriculture. And Ido's going to a meeting of that community of practice in next month? Next, next month, yeah. So Larry's really been at the forefront of, of, of thinking about scaling. He's published widely on it. He, 
is a founder of, 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 of uh, MSI, um, still actively involved with, with, with MSI. Um, and uh, I've had the, the opportunity to hear Larry talking about scaling and scaling issues on a number of occasions. He was uh, one of the prime movers behind the workshop or the conference rather that was held at Purdue University in last year and co-authored along with Julie Howard, who is a former chief scientist at the Bureau of Food Security and USAID, uh, uh, a source book on scaling, which I'm sure you will refer to in the presentation, uh, Larry. So let me hand over to Larry to kind of introduce the, the, the concept of, of scaling, some of the thinking that he's been at the forefront of, and some of the resources that he's been developing that can help people like us and organizations like Hillary. So thanks very much for joining us, Larry. Let me hand over to you.